Hello everyone! My name is Jennifer Stay. Welcome to our weekly live event. This is Coloring Bliss. I've got sweet little Rose sound asleep back there. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> and we are here having the battle of the water-soluble crayons and having such a great time. The first hour was over on Facebook and the second hour we're here with you on YouTube. So make sure you have subscribed and you hit that little like button so that we know that you are enjoying this kind of content. Today we are doing what I've promised you for several weeks and that is a battle of the water soluble crayons. I have all kinds of crayons here in front of me. Look at them all. <laughs> and we are talking about their attributes and which ones do what and we're talking about um, which ones I like, which ones I would recommend, um, that kind of thing. So we're having a really good time. I've showed off some of the swatches. I'm going to get you guys all caught up here with our YouTube audience and then we're going to dive in and um, activate some of these right here that we've been swatching. So thank you for joining us today. The first thing I want to mention is that our um, book a day giveaway for the world watercolor month is coming to an end today is the last day of july so congratulations to everyone who won books this month in july congratulations and if you didn't get a chance to win a book this month make sure you come and purchase one over at the coloring bliss <laughs> print shop um we have a lot you can order there are custom made books and yeah come and buy one now steve you were saying that you are going to send out an email yeah i'll send it out tomorrow to everybody who's um entered the okay. giveaway and i'll have a kind of a final list of everybody who won just in case you overlooked it maybe you won you don't even know it so mm -hmm. okay and then you're also going to announce the winners of the leaderboard, leaderboard yeah okay so yep. watch for that email tomorrow mm -hmm. to come out from steve well, so thanks for running the, the book a day giveaway for us. You're welcome. Okay, so um, that means that tomorrow is August and the end of World Watercolor Month. So we're going to be starting a new sort of theme for August. So I hope you um, join us. We're going to be moving into a new um, coloring medium. Should I tell them, Steve? Should I tell them what we're going to do in August? Sure. We are going to dedicate August to alcohol markers. I am so excited. Steve and I have been getting ready. We've been collecting products and thinking about it, what we can do, what I want to demonstrate, what I want to do with all of you. But August is going to be dedicated to alcohol markers. It should be lots of fun. So if you've ever wanted some tips and some more ideas and just to have fun learning more about your own markers or trying to decide what kind of markers you should buy, then August is the month for you. So I hope you um, will join us for August. It should be lots of fun. Okay, so let's get going on where why we're here today, and that is to enjoy water-soluble crayons. I have lots of brands here. We've already gone through my swatches here, and like I was telling everyone over on Facebook, I've kind of divided them into two categories, main categories, um, that I didn't know existed when I first started this out. But what I found is that the water-soluble crayons fall into two categories. There are creamy crayons, and then there are hard crayons. So we just went through and I swatched for everybody over on Facebook each of the main brands that I have, and we kind of broke them into the different categories. C is for creamy, H is for hard. So the Distress Crayons, Marabou, Uli, Jane Davenport color sticks and the gelatos are definitely creamy. So think more like lipstick type consistency. That's kind of how they feel going down. Very creamy, um, very lipsticky. Then we have more of the hard category. They feel and act very much like a standard crayon. Those would be your Karen Dash Nia colors, um, the Jane Davenport Aqua Pastels, and then I have this really obscure brand that I don't know if it's available. It's called Finest something, Finest Water Soluble Crayon Pastels. Those lay in the more of the hard pastel, hard crayon type um, category. Not quite a pencil, but um, more of crayon type feeling. So that's the first thing I wanted to put out there to you is if you want one that feels like a lipstick, go for one of these brands that have a C next to it. 
those blend differently, act differently, lay down differently. If you want one that feels more like a crayon, then I would go for a Neo Color or for the Jane Davenport Aqua Pastels. They feel much more like a standard crayon when you're using them. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about, and that's what we're going to do next, is something we've coined the Axe. <laughs> it's the ACS, the Activated Color Strength. <laughs> so, I just thought of an another one. Wax. Water activated color Oh, strength. the wax. I like that. <laughs> I like that even better. The wax. <laughs> so what I'm trying to get at here is some of these hold their pigmentation better than others after you hit them with water. Also, some of them are really stubborn. When you hit them with water, they don't want to be activated and you really have to work at it with your brush to get them going with the water. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about the activated color strength. Two things. One, how easily does it want to be activated? And two, once it is activated, how strong does that pigmentation stay? Does it just get all washed out or does it just go, wow, that's so beautiful, I want to do art with it right this minute kind of feeling about it. So let's activate. Okay. <laughs> okay, and then after we activate, we're going to play. We're going to get messy and fun. Jillian okay. did ask earlier what you use these for in coloring, so that'll be a good time. Yeah, to... you can use them for pretty much anything. <laughs> um, but some of them are more messy than others, and that brings me to a point. Let me show you what has happened. Here is my my swatch book, right? And look at the back side. See how messy? It's transferring to the back side of the pages. So you want to keep that in mind. See? Transfer, transfer. Um, if you're working in a double-sided coloring book where you've got um, a coloring page on the back side, these will transfer. So you're either going to need to seal this down with some sort of sealant or just plan on the transferring and being okay with that so yeah okay let's get these wet okay I've got um, these are my new brushes I'm still working them in I'm, I'm really putting them to the hard work so I can tell you for sure if these are my new favorite brand or not they are linked in our Amazon shop if you're curious about these these are the by creative mark they're the mimic and this is my number eight round that we're going to use here and uh oh there goes my piece of paper with our acronym we we created yeah. although i like your new acronym <clears throat> <Thanks. laughs> okay we're going to start by um activating the distress i'm going to bring them out since um they haven't seen them on youtube this is the distress crayons so they look very much like a marker and they hold in your hand like a marker, which is very nice and familiar. I like that about the Distress Crayons. Okay, here we go. Distress Crayon activated. Here we go. Oh, I gotta get it in the screen. There. That's this one right here. Okay, so what I'm looking for is, do I have to like do this a lot to get it going? And then once we do get it going, how does that pigmentation look? Does it just kind of fall flat? All these questions we have. We have so many questions. Um, like when we activate pencils, I like to all my strokes to go away. Do we care when it comes to crayons? Now, Adriana says that she likes to use uh, acrylic type of brushes for this because the stiffer bristles seem to help with the activation ah. rather than the softer watercolor brushes. I wondered about that. That is, And they do when they supply the gelatos. The brush they supply is an acrylic type brush. Should I change brushes? Yeah, try it. Okay. I have some acrylic brushes handy. These were also sent to me by one of our followers. Let's let's use this fancy flat one. Okay. It's cool. Yeah. This is a number 12 flat one with a cool little handle thingy. 
Okay, so that's how the Distress Crayon one. This one is the Neo Colors. If you're not familiar, this is what a Caran d'Ache Neo Color looks like. It looks very much like a standard crayon, except that it's water activatable. Activatable, that's mm -hmm. a new word. Here we go, Neo Color. Look how, see I'm not, I'm barely touching the paper. This is why I really like the Neo Colors. I didn't have to like, up here I was really... So if you, um... Look at that. So if you rinse that off and then you go back into some of that darker pigment that you have on the Distress Crayons, will it... I'll try. But no. That was a totally different experience. Yeah, see? It's a totally different experience. Yeah, wow. So even if I scrub, you can't... It's just a totally different... Yeah, look at that. It just melts with those Neo colors, huh? Yeah, the Neo colors are amazing. Now you pay for it, though. Um, this is Caran d'Ache. Um, that's a, a high artist color, artist Great. professional grade, and it shows. I want, you know, we are always in search of a good mid to low price product that does amazing things. But ever so often, you guys know, we come into a place where you're like, nope, there's no doubt about it. That is way better. <laughs> And that is amazing. Now that was a hard one, remember, too. So we got to remember these properties as we're going through it. So those were the Tim Holtz Distress? Yep, okay. Tim Holtz Distress. Now that went down creamy and beautiful and deep colored. That's beautiful. But when we do our test, our activated color strength test, a little bit of a different story happening here, right? Okay, let's activate the marabou. Marabous look like this. This is what, I grabbed a really dark one, I'm sorry. Let me grab one that show up on camera a little better. This is what the marabous look like right here. So it's like a little marker type feeling, but it's a little chunkier in the hand. Okay, let's activate this marabou. Here we go. Okay, I'm having to work it harder. This is exactly the experience I had when I did the original swatching. Some of them you just, they just don't want to be activated. Let's add a little more water. Come on, more water, will that help you? Nope, it just washes the color out. Okay, let's move on to Uli. Okay, this is the Uli brand right here, this big package right here. These are metallic glittery type um, crayons. So when I move it in the light, you can see that right here, this one shining. And it is the exact same body type as the Marabou. So they look like this one right here. This is the Uli. Okay, and let's activate the Uli. So same feeling as the Marabou, which is kind of not a surprise, right? Because we're guessing that Marabou and Uli are being made at the same place. Let's do the Jane Davenport now. Jane Davenport makes two kinds of water-soluble crayons. One is creamy and one is hard. Okay, so let me bring up both here. These are the creamy ones. She has two sets of these. I have this set right here, the Silky Skin set. And they look like this. They come in a nice plastic box. And they look like little lipstick tubes. I mean, they look straight up like lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> I could just put it on right now. OK, 
Okay, so that's what the Jane Davenport's look like. The color stick ones. Okay, let's activate this one. Come on. Go. This is bringing back memories of swatching on 4th of July and being like, why won't these activate? They're supposed to just activate. Okay. That is... And now we have the Jane Davenport Aqua Pastels, and they come in a tin like this, and they're a hard um, water-soluble crayon, and they look just like standard crayons, just like that. And they're named after famous painters, so like Da Vinci and all that. Okay, so let's see how this one right here activates. So Star says, I've always used a baby wipe for my distress crayons. Have you ever tried that? To activate them? No. Ooh, no. Now, they are like, um, you know, like water-soluble pencils where you can touch the end with your wet um, brush and pick up pigment like that and then paint with them. You can do it that way if you want to. Polly's also wondering if they would activate better if you like colored and then immediately activated rather than letting them sit on the paper for a while. Yeah, we can definitely try that. Okay, there is the Aqua Pastel. That's the Hard by Jane Davenport. Okay, the next one is this kind of random brand that I have called the Finest. Let me show you what those look like, if I can find them here in my stash. Here they are. This is what they look like. They are just, just look like a normal crayon. That's, and they're more of a hard pasta, hard water-soluble crayon, too. Okay, let me get in the camera. There we go. And activate it. Okay. Overall, I think the hard ones are activating better. Isn't that what you're seeing too? Yeah, for sure. Now, gelatos is where the story changed when I was swatching. Okay, let me show you what a gelato looks like. These are made by Faber-Castell. Um, this is what the gelatos, they look like a chapstick. And they swizzle up just like a chapstick would. So this is a gelato. Um, we've got two here. One that is a standard gelato. And then this is a pearlescent type gelato. Let me move it in the light so you can see how it catches the light. Bling, bling. And we're going to activate both. And you're going to see that the story changes here. You ready for a story change? I'm ready. So these are creamy, just like the other ones. Now, let's get this in the shot so you can see. Okay. Look at that. Is that not impressive? That's a lot of pigment there, isn't it? It has a very high ax score, or yes. wax score. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, that is, that is dye your brush purple kind of color. <laughs> I gotta keep swirling this brush for a second, get all that purple out. Carrie D59 says, I believe the gelatos are being discontinued. What? Polly asked not. if you've tried the portfolio crayons. Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, here we go. It did officially dye that brush. Look, it's purple wow. now. Okay, let's try the more shiny one and see if we have the same. So, gelatos are more expensive. 
but I think we can see why. Can you see why Maribu, Uli, Jane Davenport, but look at the color pigmentation difference when we've moved over. This is why I don't think it has to do with the time it spent on the paper. It could have. In fact, let's test that right now. Let's grab the Marabou. Well, that two holes as well. Yeah. And that purple again. <laughs> oh, let's start with the two holes. Okay, so let's lay down a Tim Holtz. I'm going to really give it a lot of help. I'm going to lay down a lot more than I did up here. So if anything, I'm being too kind. Because <laughs> that's just the kind of person I am. Okay, let's see now. We did it right away. Get it going. Okay, it's doing better. So maybe some of them are better if you do them right away. Let's see if the theory works on more than those. Let's try Marabou. Come here, Marabou. Don't be shy. And I think it was the pink. Yep, this is the one I did for Marabou. Again, I'm going to lay down a lot. Activate it right away. Oh, some purple got in there. I'm sloshing water now. What do you think? Should we try an early? Do distress crowns again, but don't lay down a ton of it. Do the same as what you did before. <laughs> do you think I was being too unfair? Yeah, it's not the same. Okay. Okay, does that look more like what I did before? Yeah. Oh. Get in there, little pigment. Oh. Oh, well. It definitely likes to be activated immediately. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. What do we think, everyone? So I'm going to write this is Distress, this is Marabou. And this is distress. Okay. Maybe hold it up close so they can see the difference. What do we think? The marabou. I don't know. The marabou is. We'll let it dry, but. Might be it's, a little bit better. I think it is a little bit better, yeah. And the distress definitely seems to be better. Yeah. But don't you agree the gelatos are like... Oh, yeah, look how rich those are. Yeah. So, after I did all my swatching, I went and put the big set of gelatos into my Amazon gift card, into my Amazon um, shopping cart. I haven't bought them yet because they're pricey. <laughs> so there's uh, been but a I couple comments about, like, smearing the gelato or yeah. smearing them first. And then getting them wet, or they're talking about a, taking a brush tip to the tip. Yeah. And then doing it that way, you know, so. Yeah. There's different ways of applying. So let's move on now. Now that we've done our creamy versus hard conversation, I think we've covered that good. And we've talked about our activated color strength. I think we've covered that well. Some are weaker than others. I think you get what you pay for in these. Um, if you pay for the Neo colors, you're going to be pretty happy with what you get. Same with the gelatos. I think you're going to be happy with what you get. Gelatos. So again, you get what you pay for. Um, and then I think the lighter the color, 
the 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 more the pigment suffers as you hit it with water. I think that's the other kind of takeaway from all of this. Does that sound right to you, Steve? Yeah. Okay. So let's start playing now. Let's bring this up. Actually, I think is this dry enough? Let me see if this is dry enough. And we'll flip the page and show you how some of these um, act. Oh, oh, I'm getting messy. Okay, <laughs> I'm getting messy already. I'm not on purpose. Okay, so we got a blank piece of paper here. And which ones should we play with, Steve? I'm thinking creamy is where it's at here for the next stage. So let's bring up our gelato stash. I don't care which ones we play with. So I guess whatever everybody wants to see. We can just kind of dump them all out. <coughs> Excuse me. Anne is wondering if uh, you can show us reactivating these swatches. Um, what do you think? What do you what do you think she means by that, Steve? Reactivating the swatches. So after they've dried? Maybe so. Okay, I'm getting all the gelatos out. What paper this are you on there? Is that a watercolor? This is a watercolor pad. And I think it's the Canson watercolor. Okay, we're pulling them all out. Okay, so gelatos come with, when you buy a gelato kit, you get tools. This one came with a little acrylic brush. Isn't it a pretty little brush? And you get, which we're going to try these, you get two little blending wedges. I I'm making a mess, Steve. Uh, uh, just throw that away. We're not even going to keep that box anymore. Whoa, I'm getting really hot. I might need a... Okay, so we're going to leave the hard ones in here. We might add a little hard as we go. This kit, see, came with a little... Um, I think it's a stencil or is it a stamp? Looks like a stamp. And another one of these brushes, but we're not going to get it into there. So we've got the marabou's handy, we've got the distress crayons, we've got these ready. We've got some tools. I have this one which is more, it's not as hard as a pumice stone, but it's definitely more rigid. I wonder what it would feel like wet. Same. Okay, this is much more like a makeup wedge. And then I have my own makeup wedges that I bought at the Dollar Tree. I also have a blending stump that we can use. I have a painter's palette, um, palette knife. I have some makeup applicators that I picked up at Dollar Tree. I've got um, glycerin we can play with. I've got um, aquaphor, which is basically petroleum jelly. And I've got matte medium, which is an acrylic additive that you can mix into different art products and get some cool things happening. So we've got lots of stuff we can try here. We also have more products, sparkly things and yeah, we got lots. And then I've got my palette here and I have, where did it go? My thing, oh, it's down here already to keep my surface clean, but we can cut on it. There's a cutting board under here if you can see it. Robin's wanting, wondering how, <clears throat> how permanent are the colors when they're dry, will they reactivate? Yes, um, and they are, they transfer to the back of your paper, so you need to seal them in uh, if you don't want them to transfer. I gotta get this box. There, okay, there. <laughs> it's a mess, a good mess, a good arty mess. Okay, so let me show you some of the things I've been playing around with. Uh, one of the things I really found was helpful was blue tape. Um, I was having fun making, um, let's knock off some of the stickiness. So one of the things you can do with these is make backgrounds. So let me show you 
how pretty these blend out. So you would make your take your blue tape and block out your background wherever you are working. Okay, so let's say this is our coloring page and we have our our thing that we've colored in the middle. Um, here is our beautiful coloring page that we've colored. And now we want a background around our beautiful coloring page. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're going to use some uh, pastels. And what I was doing was taking, let's try, we've got their hard one. Does anybody know what that's for? Uh, I'm going to use a makeup sponge because that's what I was playing around with. And let's go for an iridescent type look. We're going to use that color. Let's use that color. And let's use that color. That looks... No, I don't like that one. Let's use that one instead. Got a couple drinkable and free miners. Oh, that's a good suggestion. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Rose, are you ready? Let's start with a light color, yellow. This is buttercream. And I think it's one of the iridescent ones, but I don't know, we're gonna find out. So I'm going to load it on to my, the end of my sponge here. I might get my sponge wet to help it move here. Polly's wondering if you've tried purple tape. It's better than blue painter's tape. No need to knock back the sticky. I haven't bought it yet, but guess what? It's in my cart. <laughs> I think it's in my cart. Um, yeah, my cart is really full right now. I was, what else was in my cart today that I was showing you, Steve? It's like, I, I need to spend some money Steve and then I didn't buy anything I was a good girl <laughs> okay so we're gonna rub this on that worked really good I got the I remembered as I got going that that's what I did last time you get the end of your makeup sponge just a little bit wet and then it picks up the pigment off the end of your gelato really easy get a little bit wet again Okay, trying to go fast here, you guys, so we can do more than one technique. And try for like a sunset type colors here. That looks good. Cap back on. Now we're going to go for um, guava. A little bit of water. that on the floor. There. Okay, so I'm just using the wet sponge and picking up. This is the same sponge because I'm working light to dark so I can just use the same tool. But the sponge is a little bit wet so it's picking it up really easy. Ooh, pretty. Very peachy. More, get more on there. There. Mm, I like that. And uh, Polly's saying if you use a baby wipe, you don't have to wet the sponge. That's a good idea. I need to try that. We'll try that. 
Maybe we should do that with the next color. Okay, there's guava. Okay, and the next color I picked was uh, is watermelon. And I'm gonna try the baby wipe trick. Going in for a baby wipe. I hope my baby wipes work. These are those terrible Cottonelle flushable wipes. I have nothing against flushable wipes. <laughs> Just in an art studio, they're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> they fall apart too fast, which is their, the whole point of a flushable wet. They're supposed to fall apart. But in an art studio, <laughs> you need them to like stand up to some abuse. <laughs> what an interesting topic. Yeah, look. Thank you, Polly. Polly just donated. She says, so nice to sit outside and chill with y'all. Oh, that sounds so pleasant. Oh, yeah, look at that. And she's up in Washington. Thank you so much for your donation, Polly. Look at that. That works really good. And it's adding a bit of texture. Because there was like a quilted cottonelle texture on my flushable wipe. Which I'll be glad when they're gone and I'm going to go buy some cheap non-flushable wipes <laughs> from the store when this is gone. Okay, so this is going to be a really nice sunsetty type background. Just very subtle, soft colors. Okay. So let's take the tape off and see how it looks. Okay. Pretty. I love taking the tape off. Come on. There. Okay, so that's our first one with a nice subtle, let me bring it up, let's see if any of the sheen made it. No, I think I watered it down too much. Maybe we can see some of the sheen. Okay, oh there you saw. That's more what it looks like in person. That's getting washed out. That's more what it looks like in person. Okay, that is one thing you can do with them. Okay, now we can do um, stencils with them, which is lots of fun. And we were playing around with this with Polly a little bit when she was here with me. So let me show you what you can do. I'm going to bring up my plate so I can take it and clean it easier. So Steve, in your honor, we're going to do some blue. Thanks. So, so those were the... Gelatos? Those were all gelatos, all three gelato colors on that one. Let's do a marabou color. A nice deep blue for Steve. Thanks. So we're going to take my palette knife here and um, we're going to cut off a wedge of that color. This is which color? I can't find, oh, there it is. Uh-oh, I can't even pronounce it. Gentian, gentian, right there. Okay, then we're gonna add a little bit of this stuff. Now, it doesn't matter what brand you buy. There, every brand, Windsor Newton, um, they all, all the different art brands have a matte medium and they are just, it's a product that you add in to your art supplies. Okay, 
This stuff sets. Mix with acrylic color to increase transparency and flow, producing a transparent glaze effect finish. Can also be applied to finished acrylic artwork as a varnish. You can also use this stuff to prep a piece of paper before you do some sort of watercolor effect or other types of art projects. So it usually dries transparent um, or you can use it in things like this where you mix them in you can mix it in with acrylic paints if I can get this to cut up there we go okay so we're gonna mix this up and it's just gonna make it a little bit more mm, um, creamy Polly asked would clear gesso work yes gesso though remember has grit in it which may or may not be what you want but if you have a whole bunch of gesso that you want to use up then this would work great. People um, color their gesso all the time. Even the great Bob Ross colored his gesso. Okay. That's kind of satisfying. It's very, you want to try? I'm just watching too. Yeah. I think the marabou's might be a little less on the creamy side so it's having a hard time giving up it's staying chunky which I'm alright with okay I'm having Polly flashbacks <laughs> when she was here Polly are you having flashbacks I think I need a second spatula There we go. Oh, pretty. Okay, we're going to add a little bit more matte medium. <laughs> so that's De La Rani. Yeah, this one's by De La Rani. I also have another brand up there. Um, and it seems to act the same way. Like I said, I don't think it really matters what brand you buy. Um, if you go down your art aisle, usually this type of product is just a little bit above eye level because it's not like the most eye-catching, exciting products like all the colors and everything. Um, so if you just look up a little bit higher, you'll see this kind of, all the gessos and all that kind of additives and stuff are all usually in the same type of area and that's where you'll find these matte mediums. Polly says, yes, indeed I am, with a big smile on my face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are getting somewhere now. And oh boy, this is a beautiful color. Very cerulean blue is the color I'm getting here as the white is mixing in. Okay, so now we need a stencil, Steve. This is much more stencil... Um, ready. Now, the other thing this matte medium did is it's, this is an acrylic. So think of acrylic paint. As it dries, it's going to be more like an acrylic paint now. It's rubbery? Yeah, like <laughs> a plastic. Like an acrylic. So it will have a different texture and I'm trying to get the last of those little bits gone but maybe we won't worry about it if I sat here a little longer I think I could work them out but I kinda dig the little bits they don't bother me I'm not bothered isn't that a saying? <laughs> I was watching um, a British comedy the other day and they were saying it and was a different British comedy and she was saying it. And that was Marabou? This is the Marabou. How do you spell Marabou? M A R A B U. A B U? A B U, yes, Marabou. Mixed Media Art Crayon, Watercolor Crayon. 
Okay. This is, I could just sit here and play for quite a while. Okay. Let's put it onto paper now. I've got this book. <laughs> Close up of a black object. I've got this book right here. There you can see me in my little picture in picture where I keep a whole bunch of different stencils that I've gathered throughout the years. Um, some make for good backgrounds. Some are more like main attraction type things. Um, now, Polly happened to have sent me this little stencil, so we'll just go ahead and play with it and see how it goes down. Polly asked, remember the two colors we got? We used two colors of gelatos. I'm trying to remember what we did. So we're going to use this stencil that Polly sent me. Well, it's kind of a wimpy stencil. I hope we can treat it with love here where we're going to be using something thick on it. I'm going to just use a little bit of tape. This is a cool like wave-like background. Let's see. I'm not going to be too careful here. I'm just going to go for it. Leslie says the saying is, do I look bothered? Do I look bothered? That's the Catherine tape. Yeah, Catherine tape. But then I was watching um, another show the Leslie's, other day. I think she's from the UK. Ah. Wolf Shadow asks, so could you use that as a sort of molding paste now as well as a paint? Yeah. So when you watch mixed media artists, if you ever want to watch some really fun art, you can, um, here on YouTube, look up mixed media artists. And they'll make stuff like this up all the time. And then they, they just, you know, <laughs> get in there and do the coolest stuff, layer in stuff like this and add all kinds of stuff. So we're just going to get messy here. And the trick with stencils is to try to keep the, the color where you want it. You're out of frame. I'm out of frame. I'm trying to be a good professional YouTuber here. Polly mentioned we used two colors of gelatos, uh, one a blue and a gold. Oh, that's right. Really neat streaks. I remember that now, the streaks from the gold. So I'm just going to kind of go for it here. Half the fun when you watch these, oh, there's a little blurb that we didn't get mixed in. When you watch the mixed media artists is they just embrace unpredictable things. When stuff happens, they're just like, ooh, isn't that neat? Let's go for it. So Steve, once I get this on here, I'm going to need you to take it to the bathroom sink and wash off all of this. Angela says that looks fun and messy. Oh yeah. This looks like a project to do with um, grandkids and nieces and nephews. Okay, I'm going to try to scrape off and get more down here. See how far I can make what we made travel down this stencil. I don't know how far we can... Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. It's officially drying on my plate, so I'm going to send it with Steve to the bathroom. Because, like I said, we've mixed in an acrylic medium, so that means this is no longer just water-soluble. It has the acrylic in it now. So I'm going to have him wash this off right away. There's a little bit of that Dawn soap in case you need to help it. And that's pure pigment, so be careful with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's peel this up, and then I'm going to send this to Steve, too, to clean up. If you want to do the plate first, there's a little blue on the bottom side right there, too, so be careful. I want to see this. Well, you want to see it come up? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I want to see the reveal. 
Okay. Reveal it is. Oh, my fingers are sticky. Okay. Here we go. Oh, cool. I got some smeared underneath there. Oh, cool. Okay, you can. Thank you, assistant. <laughs> Look how cool. Now, I did smear because what's happened is the stencil has slipped and so some of the blue has gotten under the lines, but that's okay. Like I said, in the mixed media world, they would embrace that and just put something on top of that and keep going with it. So now you wanna let that dry. Um, when we were doing this with Polly, we let it dry and it has this really neat texture and we did use metallic gelatos when we did it um, the, the last time and it does have a nice shine and everything to it and I know some of these mediums that you can buy are a gloss medium so you could try that as well and have a gloss effect with this whole thing so that would be really fun too so that's one way you can use these if you decide to buy them and get multiple effects um, going on with your stuff but it has a really cool like thick Type. I'll try to move it in the light so you can see how it laid it down thick. I don't think you can see that, but it is like thick paint on the paper. So that turned out cool. Okay, I gotta get some of this blue off my hands so we don't spread blue everywhere. Um, I'll try to look at the... Oh, uh, looks great, I guess. Oh, <laughs> everybody likes it. <laughs> okay good um, yeah my creative life is saying she does the mixed media art journal and likes the gelatos that's cool alright I almost have all the blue off so I don't spread it see how look it's falling apart ah I hate these wipes hate them okay There. That's better. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside and let it dry because I, I know for a fact I'm going to stick my hand in it. So we're going to set it aside. Okay, let's keep playing. Let's keep doing stuff. All right, now we've got about 15 more minutes that we can keep playing. So I want to show you some of the other things they can do. I'm going to bring up a mandala that we can play in now. Um, yeah, Rob and Steve's getting that stencil in the water right now. He's in there washing it. So hopefully it will survive. Okay, so I've got my Mandala Bliss book here. This is um, volume... In case you're curious, this is volume three, and it's printed on the watercolor paper, so we can be as messy and wet as you as we want. So that's going to be good. Let me zoom this out just a little bit, so you can see more of the page. There. Okay. So let's play some more with some of these other things, like I've got um, some glycerin and some other blending type tools so we can see what they will do to help spread. Um, you can see I've played with these before. Let's get a couple of them out and see what we can do. Okay, we've tried the distress, we've done, we've played with those. Let's bring up the sparkles, the oolies. Okay, so I think what we'll do, let's grab a couple blues. We've got a light and a dark blue. And what I'm gonna do first is um, these right here. Here's Steve, he's in there um, washing the plate. Where did these brushes go? Right here. Let's get a smaller brush going. Uh, I think the purple one. Okay. 
I'm going to take this. Why does that feel yucky? There we go. Now, what we're going to do is take this light blue and see if we can pick up and do a little light wash. Get it going here. Okay, so if we come in here and wash this on, I have a vision of what this is going to do. Let's see if I can recreate what's in my mind. Can she make what's in her mind happen on the paper? Now these are the Uli um, sparkle ones. The bright metallic is what they're called. Rainbow sparkle. So I'm trying to lay down enough that we get some sparkle. A little more water. Steve will be back here in just a second to look at the chat, you guys, and catch up with your comments. He's stuck in there cleaning those, the stencil and everything. <laughs> I'll have him report to you guys how easy or how hard that was to clean. Okay, so we've laid down the light blue and now what I'm hoping to do is take the dark blue and apply it straight to the section like this. And then take this. Did you see Melinda donated? No! Melinda donated says thanks for all you do and teach us. Thank you so much, Melinda. Okay, that worked good. Okay, so I let's go. We gotta do that again. So I'm using a light and a dark and a little something to blend. So a Q-tip would work. I'm attempting to use a eyeshadow applicator that I picked up at Dollar Tree and blend it out to get the gradient I want on top of that light blue. Now is there shine? That's what I want to know. Oh, there's shine! It's shining! It's working! Okay. Let's do it again. Let's do another angle, Steve, so they can see. Let's do it right here. Same thing. So we'll use the light blue. Lots of water on my brush. Get it going. And then paint it down on here. So Steve, how hard was that to clean? Well, it, I wouldn't call it easy, but it also wasn't too hard. Like even just hot water, uh huh, a lot of, was melting a lot of it off. What about the stencil? Was it hard? Was that, that the was hardest the part? Oh, it was the easiest. Yeah. What was hardest? The the plate? Um, I think the um, palette knives, because oh. probably because they're plastic and they seem to kind of absorb some of the color or something so they stain easier I would have thought the stencil would have been the hardest part yeah that one came off really easy but that was also the freshest as well yeah Robin says when I do stencils I usually have a dish pan with soapy water <laughs> and then I just drop what she's using in it that's so smart okay then I took the, the stick straight to the page. 
Holly asked, what about the disposable makeup applicators that look like a pointy Q-tip on the That's end? what I was just going to grab. <laughs> Holly and I are one with our thoughts. So I've got these here that have the pointy on one end and a flat on the other end. And this is going to let me get right in there to spread that dark color. And then spread it out. So either one will work great. Look at that. It blends beautifully. Oh, look how pretty. I picked blue for you, Steve. Okay, now I want to try if you apply it. I don't want to. I know it's not going to work. <laughs> I know it's not going to work. But we're going to do it anyway to see. I, I, want, I want to do it because I want to show you why I was doing it the other way. If you apply it straight on instead of the way I was doing it where you pick up the pigment off of the end and then paint it down, I want to show you what it's going to do. Actually it's, it's behaving itself. Okay good. What I was worried is it was going to leave behind the strokes of the crayon and oh. it's actually doing okay and it's faster than the other way so I think we're okay Whew. a little water and I just made a mistake I wasn't going to do blue on these petals I was going to do blue every other petal Oh. Guess what, everybody? We're doing blue on all the petals. <laughs> I guess what we, I know what we'll do. I know. I meant to do it. Yes. We're going to do blue like that, and then we can bring up uh, purple as the dark. that. Okay, and then let's try the makeup applicator again and see if I like the way it feels or do I like the way the Q-tip, it feels exactly the same. If anything, this is a little more annoying because it's small. Jane's wondering, would it work if you put water down first and then the crayon? Ooh. Oh, I like that. That's cool. <laughs> this is so fun. <laughs> okay, let's try the water first. I like that, that that theory. So we'll do that here in this spot. This is very watercolor-ish, where you would prep your area with water first. Okay, and now we'll bring in our light blue. Ooh, look at it melt. Ooh, it's so melty. And now we can move it around. Ooh. I like it. Yeah, it, it made it go really easy and fast. That was fast. Mmm. Okay, now let's do the purple on this one. Okay, and our little blending tool. There. So can you lift it off with water? Anne was asking. Oh, that's a good question. We do have a mistake here. So I've got my paper towel really soaked. And uh, let's see if it lifts. Let's get it right there. Let's 
so we're letting it sit and hopefully grip onto the pigment. That one doesn't want to lift, but look, I can... Now this is watercolor paper, <laughs> and it has the magic sizing, right? So I'm able to pretty much erase it. Um, so I think that's more of a property of the paper. Um, yeah, because here's another bit of it that I got. That one doesn't want to come off. <laughs> okay. Now I want to like do green in there or something. Anyway. Jill is uh, saying, Jennifer, do you remember when you heated the paper before using wax crayons? Uh-huh. I want to do that really again. really flow with heated paper. Oh, that sounds like fun. Okay, let's try this wet first technique again. Get it all wet with our clean water. And then our light blue uli. Okay. And then our wet brush to just smooth it out. That's a good order of operations. Adriana says, I think you can lift with a baby wipe through a stencil to give some reverse image looks. Oh, we should totally try that. Okay, then this one is where we're using the dark blue. And we're using this tool to get it right down. This one problem with these is you can't get the crayon itself to a sharp point. So you really need a tool like this to get into any little detailed areas. Look at that. So let's try lifting. I wonder though if that's, hmm, we could try. Should we try, Steve? Let's do one more with the purple. So we got three and three. Oh yeah, order of operations. First, prep with water. Second, lay down your creamy yumminess. Third, wet brush. Move it around. That works really good. That's a nice watercolory look. Okay. Marcy just donated. Oh, thank you, Marcy. <laughs> Oh, you guys are so kind. Okay, a little bit of the purple now. And then we're going to use our eyeshadow applicator to blend the purple out. There. Pretty. I like it. Okay, so we want to try the using the stencil to lift something, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Adriana asked if you have a stencil with just a small hole that you could lift on each petal. Ooh, good idea. Let's see what I've got. We could do like that. That would be kind of cool. One of these little flowery things. Let's yeah. do that. Oh, this is taped down. There we go. Okay. Well, okay. 
this place is a mess. <laughs> okay, it's a good mess, but it's a mess. Okay, now let's see here. And then a wet wipe, right? Is that the technique I'm being advised to do? Oh, my wipes so. are down here. Okay. Like, they even fall apart before you even pull them out of the... <laughs> Watch Jennifer complain about her wipes. Okay, here we go. We're going to do... Huh, I think... We're going to tape off the areas I don't want involved here. Angela thinks you need to come and organize her art room. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it took me forever to organize this room. Linda likes your stencil storage, says she needs to do something like that. It's been great having it in the three ring binder like that. It was really easy to just use sheet protectors and some of the stencils even have three hole punches in them already. Um, so I just used that was actually where I got the idea was, oh, it had a three-hole punch, and I'll just use um, sheet protectors for the ones that didn't. And then I put a black piece of paper in there so you can see what the stencil looks like. Okay, so I've taped off everything except for that little flower shape that we're going for. Okay, so I'm going to line it up. And then I've got my wipe, and here we go. We're, we, we've activated. Let's see if this works. I wonder if this wipe is wet enough. It's getting some blue off though. I'm gonna squiggle, squiggle a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely lifting blue out. Squiggle, squiggle. Okay, let's see. Our first try. Mixed results. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Maybe should you do like a fresh petal and then do it? We can try this one that was more recent. Yeah, maybe if you... Get it in the Make sure the back side is dry. Okay, let's in the try. Purple area, would it show better? But that's not. Hmm. I'm gonna get my wipe just a little bit more wet. Okay, and this time I'm not gonna squiggle. <laughs> I should drink something while I'm doing this. What song was that? <laughs> I have no idea what song that was. Okay. Have I waited long enough? I don't know. Who told me to do this? Have I waited? Adriana. Adriana, have I waited long enough? <laughs> okay, she let's said the see. same thing. It might do better in a darker color. Well, it's definitely bringing blue up. The other thing is some pigments lift better than other pigments like some brands they're going to lift better than other brands so the Uli might not be the best one like the Faber Castells might be better um, so this could take some experimenting <laughs> okay let's see yeah I can't even tell I was there <laughs> okay let's try again I think I need more water and Steve thinks I need to do it fresh. So let's do a fresh one. Okay, this is an all blue one. Oh, Polly and Adriana said you need to rub it. Okay, I'll rub and we're going to do it on a fresh one. So order of operation. Step one. Wet the area. Step two. Lay down. 
your water soluble crayon. Step three, wet brush, activate and smooth it out. My Creative Life says the same thing, just rub with a damp baby wipe. Okay. No need to let it sit. Okay. Step four, shading with the darker Uli color. Step five, blend out the dark shading area with our tiny little pokey tool so we can get into that little area and blend. Okay, now we're going to dive right in with a fresh wipe, because I'm not afraid to go through these wipes. <laughs> and I really don't think these are wet enough, so I'm going to get them just... They're saying damp, like it doesn't need to be wet. Well, these are in general just kind of dry. So, okay, now we're going to lay this on. And they said to what? Rub it. Rub it. failed again. I think I know what went wrong that time. Water got underneath the stencil. Maybe just try it down. Okay. Try in the darker area. You can see it better though. That first one was still our best one. So maybe fresh doesn't matter. Try in the purple. I don't want it in the purple. <laughs> <laughs> we could try... Um, no, it won't even show. Let's dry this really good. I'm going to try this one right here. This is a darker one. And we're going to try... Oops. Okay, and I'm not going to dip the, the white, it's just going to be what it is. And we're going to let it sit for just a second to kind of soften the pigments. I'm imagining them getting softer. Okay, they're soft now. Now we're going to start to rub. These are the Uli's? Yes. Maybe the Uli's too? Yeah. Okay, that one was better. Yeah. So less moisture, <laughs> not dipping it in the water, Jennifer. And I'm wondering if it's the Uli's. Look at the shine though. Mm -hmm. You're also in the lighter area too. Yeah. Show it better. So the if we tried um, a darker, let's try it on the darker. I would like want to try. Do like a, a gelato. Yeah. Instead. Look how good the waves are looking. That looks cool. Let's put this over here. I got art supplies going every direction today. Okay, Uli's. Okay, gelatos. I've got, um, I think my darkest was that berry one. 
and I've got like this dark coffee, iced coffee one. Yeah, here's the berry one. Okay. So let's do the same idea here. Let me prep an area. Go into it. And then spread it out. Like I wonder now, do you guys let it dry before doing the lifting thing? That looks really chunky. I don't like the way that turned out. Let's see if I can make it look better without doing... Let's see if you just pick it up straight wet. Definitely goes down less patchy, but not as dark. And then let's see if you just, without pre-treating the paper, still get that patchy look. Interesting. Interesting. Learning, learning. Okay, so we have three places to test our wet wipe stencil lift. Pre-treated, not pre-treated, and lift the pigment straight off of the stents off of the end. Am I supposed to let it dry? Did they say? Okay, so here we have that same shape. And we'll get a wipe. Fresh wipe. Okay, let's start with that one. It looks the least wet. It worked. Is my stencil the problem? So I think my final thoughts, I'm really impressed um, with the Karen Dash Neo colors, but they're not the creamy type. So these types of effects we're doing right now with the smearing and the, um, like adding the different matte mediums into it, that kind of thing, I don't think you can do it quite the same with the neo colors but when you activate them with water you can get the small details the neo colors are neat and I think eventually I'll probably get the full set of neo colors well that doesn't look very great because <laughs> yeah. it's wet and the stencil pushed on it yeah um, as far as the creamy side of the water soluble crayons I'm really impressed with the gelatos. Like I said, I've got a big set of them in my gift, no, in my, what's it called, cart on um, Amazon. I don't know if I'll get them or not. I have a lot of water-soluble crayons, so I don't necessarily need them. But I'm really impressed with the pigmentation, especially the... Um, activated color strength of the gelatos and you get the added benefit of all these fun creamy effects that you can do the backgrounds mixing it with the matte mediums um, and all that kind of stuff that you can play around with so if you're looking for something um, creamy that you want to try some mixed media type effects and um, get a little messy I would steer you towards the gelatos, they have both a metallics, well, I think they're more like a pearlescent. They have some metallics to them, but they have pearlescents and they have the good standard colors. They have all kinds of stuff you can get and they have them in kits as well. 
Now someone mentioned they might be discontinuing the gelatos. I don't know if that what you know, I don't know if that's true or not. So um I hope not because they're beautiful. <laughs> um but there seems to be a lot of good variety in this area, a good price um range as well. But it seems like most art supplies you get what you pay for. Um you know, like the gelatos are a little bit more money, and I think it's because you're getting what you pay for. Yeah, that didn't work very well either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling with the lifting thing. I think I need more practice. I don't think it's anything but my lack of practice here. <laughs> so I think that's my final thoughts. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot here. Are there any final questions I can answer as I sit here in this mess? We didn't have a chance to play with them with the glycerin. I think they would be activated really nicely with glycerin. Glycerin um, works really well with anything water friendly. And so I think it would be worth playing around with at some point, although we don't have time tonight. But I do think glycerin would be a good matchup with these. I also think um, trying the um, petroleum, what, jelly. petroleum jelly type products and playing around with blending with these might be a good fit as well. So I think either one of those, if you already own those types of blending agents, would be really fun to play with. So. I think there's a lot of variety and a lot to do with these products and there's already a lot of videos out there on like gelatos so you could apply the gelato knowledge if you decide to buy like these um, rainbow sparkle ones you could apply all the gelato knowledge to the rainbow sparkle uli um, crayons and get a lot of cool effects so lots of fun can be had with these types of products remember though that they will transfer to the back side of your coloring pages if you look at my swatch page here and the back side of my swatch page the colors have transferred so you do want to seal these um, so you don't have transferring like that um, some sort of spray sealant works great or any kind of clear paint on type sealant anything like that will work you can go to any art store and look for just a good sealant and that'll work fine to just keep it from transferring and moving on you so so of those that are less expensive which ones did you like the best the less expensive ones um i don't know i really wish i could have tried the recollections brand from um michael's when you buy the recollections brand off of amazon they are really expensive so that's why i haven't gotten them but from what i understand when you get the recollections brand they look almost exactly like this only i don't think they're sparkle um anybody who owns them can tell me if that's true they're really cost effective from um, Michaels. So I wish I had a chance to try those because I have a suspicion they're going to be good because they're in the same package as the Uli's and the Marabou. So I'm guessing they're coming from the same Chinese uh, manufacturer. So I'm thinking that might be a good way to go. I really, other than that, um, you know, the gelatos are more money. I'm trying to remember the cost of some of these. Um, Jane Davenport's are more money. The Marabou's are mid-range, but I think you have to get them at art stores. And the Distress Crayons, they're even a little bit more money. In general, they all tend to be a little bit pricey. <laughs> so I would try the Recollections. If you've got a local um, Michaels close to you, I would go try the Recollections because like I said they're in the same packaging as <coughs> excuse me the more expensive marabou's so what else would you guys um agree with me those of you who have a bunch of these what would your feelings be on brands oh dear my voice is shutting down <laughs> so I, I had high hopes for the Distress crayons. I like that they come in small little kits like these. It seems a little more price friendly and um, Tim Holtz has little tins you can buy to store your distress crayons in. Although these little vinyl things are 
adequate. I think you don't need the tins. So I like that. I like that they're, they feel more like a marker. So I really like the distress crayons too. So none of them I hated. Some of them just acted better and it would depend on the situation. Do you want one that's creamy? Do you want one that's hard? That would be your first question for yourself. Do I want a creamy or do I want a hard? And then how much money do you want to spend? So that's my, my thoughts on it. Any other last minute questions before we sign off? Thank you again to all the people who donated to our channel tonight. I really appreciate all of your support. Remember if you enjoyed videos like this to make sure you give that little thumbs up. That always helps our channel and helps the algorithm know that you found value here in this video so that it will serve it out to other people that they think might like this kind of video. So I hope you had fun. Um, look forward to my upcoming gouache video. I have it half filmed. I'm going to be filming the rest of it tomorrow. So you can look for that. Hopefully it'll be coming out by the end of this week. And then we move into August. And like I said at the beginning of this, this video, August is going to be dedicated to alcohol markers. And I'm so excited. We're going to shift gears, go out of water color because it's not watercolor month anymore in August. And we're going to move into alcohol markers and really celebrate alcohol markers. So whether you have some and you've been wanting to learn more about them or you've been thinking about venturing into alcohol markers as an art medium, August is going to be a fun month for you. So hopefully you'll stick around and enjoy the videos that we have planned for you in August. So, and if you did enter for a chance to win in the book a day giveaway, remember to watch for Steve's email. He's going to be sending that out to congratulate all the winners and kind of just wrap up that big long month long giveaway. So watch for that um, email. And other than that, I think that's it for tonight. So thank you everyone for watching and participating and we'll see you guys next week. Have a wonderful, colorful, blissful night. Bye bye everyone.